Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel and blog. My name is Gia Mirza and today I want to talk to you guys about how to use a ruling pen. Now, I have written a blog post about this uh, subject over at www.giamirza.com and would suggest you go and have a look at that as well. Um, my advice would be watch the video first and then have a go uh, with me because I think it will help. Today, the things that I'm using, pretty much you can see on screen at the moment. Of course, I'll have some paints, um, brushes. I've got a my palette, the actual ruling pen itself, which I'm uh, showing you here. I've also got my compasses and a ruling pen or a steel pen attachment so that I can ink in circles using my compass. I'll have a straight edge with an inking edge. Um, and of course, the usual supplies, brushes, clean water uh, and some scrap paper. Okay, folks, so let's have a look at the ruling pens a bit more closely. They're also called steel pens, that's the first thing to note, and they come in a variety of different shapes, sizes and styles. Um, <clears throat> the one I'm holding now is, I think, fairly standard. Um, it's got two tapered arms coming to a fine point, and you can see it's got this little adjustment wheel or screw on it. So essentially the way it works is we insert our liquid medium into the space between the two arms. We use the screw to adjust the, the, the size of the aperture, so how much ink will flow, and that really determines the weight of our line. Before we move on, very quickly, just wanted to point out, you may well have a ruling pen yourself and, and haven't realized it, because they often come with sort of these modern sets that you buy. Um, this is just an example of one from Rotring that came with a, a set of compasses that I bought a while ago. The next thing I want to look at very, very quickly is my inking edge. So you've probably all got rulers and, and, and many of them. Um, the ones that I'm showing you right now from Rotaring, and they actually have a step built in. So they're undercut, um, which allows for easier inking. But if you don't have one of those, a regular ruler will work just as well. As long as it's got a beveled edge, you simply flip it over, put it down. And can you see that rocking motion? That essentially will allow you to use that edge that's lifted up from the paper as your inking edge. So a quick note on paper, I'm using this De La Rowney Jumbo Drawing Pad. It's a fairly heavy weight and it will take a light wash of paint. You can use ink on it. It's acid free and it's a lovely smooth texture, so perfect for what we're doing today. So I've got a piece uh, pre-prepared uh, and cut up for, for scrap paper. I've also drawn a little box of just uh, straight lines that will be useful for us um, when we start to practice using the pen. I've also got another uh, piece of paper that we can use when we start to ink in circles. And I've also drawn a little geometric pattern um, that we can also use to fill in. Um, so it's just all a part of the exercise that we'll be doing today. OK, so the next thing to do is to prepare your medium. Now, I'm going to use gouache today, which is a type of watercolour. So I've squeezed a little bit into my palette and I'm just mixing it up into the consistency that I like, which is like melted ice cream. Um, that works really well for me. So now our paint is ready, we need to prepare our workspace. Just a few important things to note. We should never fill our ruling pen above our directly above our work because spills will happen. Um, it's just it's a par for the course. Um, so you should be really, really careful about your space and your environment when you are getting ready to, to do this. So the next stage really is to load up the ruling pen with your chosen medium. So in this case, our paint. As you can see, I'm using um, a brush to gently stroke paint into the, the, the gap between the two arms. And it's important to note what we never do is we never dip the the nib of the, the ruling pen into the paint. A, you don't want to damage the fine points and B, that's this is not a dip pen. Um, I'm also showing you here that it, it it doesn't take too much force or energy for the paint to drip. So you do need to be careful. Um, if the consistency is right, it shouldn't just drip as it is, but any sudden movements or sort of jerking um, and you are going to have a spill uh, on your hands. So please do be careful. Now, um, I'm going to give you uh, uh, another closer look at that again. Um, so what you can see now is I've zoomed right in 
and I'm using a slightly different color, but you can see that I've set or adjusted the, the gap to where I want it. And my paint, um, I've picked it up on my brush and I'm very, very gently just sliding the brush against the side of the ruling pen. And in doing so, it, it actually just transfers the paint into the gap between the arms. So it's quite a gentle movement. You don't need a lot of force. Um, just take your time and work slowly, because if you don't, you will end up with splatters. Um, your brush will flick and you'll end up with um, splats all over the page. And it happens to me all the time, to be perfectly honest. Um, but it, it's something that you need to take care with. Once it's filled, uh, you saw me do this before, but I, I always have lots of small pieces of uh, tissue or a bit of a, a soft cloth. And I gently wipe the ruling pen. So we're all set to finally start making some marks. So we've got a filled ruling pen on our left, our paper set up in front of us. And so it's time to pick up our, our, our straight edge. And I'm using my rotating ruler that's got the uh, inking edge built in. And I'm just carefully lifting the pen. And the first thing I do whenever I start is I just try to make a small mark to see is the paint going to flow. Um, I often do that on my fingers, you've just seen there. And then the next key thing to do is align the pen vertically against the straight edge. That is the best way to get the best quality of line. And the reason is you need to have both points of your ruling pen touching the paper. So yes, you might have a slight angle when you're actually drawing the pen back, but really the pen needs to be vertically aligned to the paper so that both points of the arms are touching your piece of paper. If that isn't the case, then you'll start to see issues with the, the quality of line. At this stage, we're just doing a warm up. So what I'd recommend you do is have a play, um, you know, change the, the wheel, uh, the, the adjustment screw and, you know, see how fine a line you can create and how thick a line you can create. So I would just as I said, experiment a little bit with your ruling pen. Um, and you can see at the moment, I'm trying to get a fine line, but the paint doesn't really want to flow. And it may be that I've actually tightened it too much and there's just not enough space, or maybe the paint is drying slightly. The key thing to remember is there is quite a bit of trial and error involved here. And it's important not to get frustrated. What I want to show you next as well is just what I was referring to earlier. I've just zoomed in a little bit so that you can see it a little bit better. I, here you can see I'm angling my pen as I'm trying to make my mark. And you can see the quality of the line is very poor. It's not clean at all. It's got blurry edges and the paint just didn't want to draw. So it's just I wanted to show you what happens when you don't position or place the pen correctly and vertically against that straight edge. I would also say, <clears throat> excuse me, every time you want to refill the pen, it's really important to give the pen a good clean or a wipe before you try to refill it. If necessary, swirl it through some water, but be careful not to scrape the bottom of the pot with the pen. The, the points are really, really fine, and it's important to keep them that way so you don't want to knock them or drop them or scrape them. What you've just seen me do there is also something that happens quite a lot. So in the process of refilling and cleaning off the edges, I've managed to pull all of the paint out onto the paper. And that will happen from time to time. It just takes, again, a little bit of practice to get to know how, how softly and how much pressure you need to apply to wipe the, the tips of the pen. But that will happen, and it happens to me actually quite frequently. And so you just get used to it. Um, as, as you uh, practice more and more. I, I think what just remains to be said then at this stage is, you know, take lots of time and just practice, draw lots of lines, play with the adjustment screw, work at different, you know, weights of line, get a feel for your climate and the temperature around you. That will have an impact on how quickly your paint dries. Understand, you know, how many lines you can ink before you need to refill. All of this is really helpful information and will come in really handy when you're actually working on a, on a, if you like, a good piece of work where you're trying to outline. But the key thing to remember is you will have to work slowly. This is not something that can be done quickly. In this next stage, or step two, we're going to take it up a notch. And so what I want to do in this exercise is 
try and ink in some pre-drawn lines. And so actually this is a really good reflection of my own artistic practice where I've you know, drawn a design which I then want to ink in or outline. Um, and so this is very much uh, linked to how I work. So what I want you to do as well in, in this exercise is I want to try and aim for a graded effect. So at the top of the box, I'm gonna try and do really fine lines. Um, and so try and get the finest lines you can with the, the ruling pen that you're working with. And then every few lines, stop. Use the adjustment screw to uh, allow more paint to flow through and, and give yourself a heavier weight of line. And so really it's like an ombre effect or a graded exercise where at the top we're going to have our finest lines. And by the time we get to the bottom of the box, you should be inking in your heaviest lines. In terms of how we do it, it's exactly as I've shown before and that you've tried in the warm up exercise. Um, but again, the point of particularly for this exercise is really to practice placing your ruling pen and visualizing the exact, um, I guess, place you need to be to, to cover a, a pre-drawn line. Um, it's likely that you will need to refill the pen several times. I certainly did during this exercise when I was uh, drawing the lines in, um, but it's all really good practice. And so, you know, I would just say, you know, getting good results isn't something that you can rush. You will have to take your time. You may need to let the paint dry. Um, you'll have to adjust the, the screw and test the weight of the line every single time. And that's why you have your little bit of scrap paper right next to you. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, uh, take your time, go through the exercise. Don't forget to clean your pen um, as you refill it and enjoy it. And, and it, you know, it'd be uh, really interesting to see how you get on. Uh, another really nice touch with this exercise is once you've come to the end of it, try and put a board around um, the box, um, which you can see me do as well. You can see the completed piece that I've got up on the left hand side in, in, in dark blue in the ultramarine. Um, I think you can see that placing the border really is an effective way of finishing a design um, and, and just adds a really nice touch. So in this next exercise, I, I really want to show you very quickly how we can use the steel pen attachment in our compasses to ink in circles. Um, it really opens up the scope of what we can do with our ruling pen, so it really is very handy to try. Um, what I would recommend is you need to get your compass radius all set and positioned before you start to ink um, or add any sort of uh, paint to the ruling pen attachment. You can see there I'm also adjusting the, the knuckles that are um, uh, that, that exist within the compass. And the reason for doing that, as you will see in a second, is to make sure that when the compass is drawing its line or inking its line, that steel pen attachment remains vertical to the paper. Obviously, we won't be using a straight edge because we're making a circle, um, but it's still important that the pen itself remains vertically positioned uh, and both points of the pen are touching the paper when we're drawing. So once we're all set, we filled our steel pen attachment that's already attached to our compasses. We're giving it a little bit of a wipe and a clean, just as we have done before. We then take a lot of care to position our needle into the paper wherever we want it. And you can see I'm using both hands all the time um, when I'm positioning the compass. And so when I finish making the mark, you see again, I use both hands to adjust the radius so that I have a lot of stability. I'm not actually removing the, the compasses this time because I want to create a series of concentric circles and that's what I'm aiming for. But what I am doing, um, and you'll come to see, is I'm adjusting the top screw, which changes the radius or the thread, um, but I'm also adjusting the screw at the bottom, which is down on the actual steel pen itself, um, as we did earlier. And that is the one that adjusts the amount of paint that will flow through. And hopefully you can begin to see now that the weight of the line that I'm drawing is changing. The line is getting heavier 
as I'm moving inwards towards the center of the circle. This, I think this is a really great exercise and you can get some really um, good results with a little bit of practice. Of course, you can vary line weight. You can use multiple different colors. Um, so really, you're just limited by your own imagination. But I think, again, a really good exercise to try before we move to the next stage. So we really are coming into the home stretch now, folks. Um, in this last exercise, what we're really going to do is pull everything together and use the compass with the steel pen attachment, as well as a ruling pen to ink in our circles and this little pattern um, and straight lines that we can see. Um, I'm going to use some different color now. This is the fine tech um, metallic paint. Um, and again, I'll provide details in my blog post. So head over there if you want uh, to know exactly what I'm using. Um, but it's really pulling together everything that we've done in the previous three exercises. We will carefully load up our um, compass with paint once we've established the correct radius um, that we, we want to, to draw. Um, and really, it's just another opportunity to practice inking in lines over previously drawn ones. Um, no change, whether it's a, a compass or, a, you know, the, the, the ruling pen version that we're using, we should always test the line. And that's what you can see me doing here. I'm using my scrap paper to adjust the weight, the thickness, the radius, uh, and, and to make sure it's flowing and the line quality is good before I commit to my final my final piece of work. And so here we go. You can see again, I'm very carefully placing the compass point before I rotate the compass and ink in my line. I think what's really important here is, and, and to pay attention to, is how I'm removing the compass. In one of the earlier demonstrations, I showed you that it doesn't take a huge amount of force to, to cause the steel pen to drip. And so because of that, you've got to be very careful how you lift that compass from the paper, because you can see the paper will lift as well. But, you know, too much force and you're going to cause the ruling pen to jerk and you will end up with a, a splodge of paint somewhere that you don't want it. And so you can see what I do is I gently hold the paper down and use both hands, if possible, to lift the compass point out of the paper. Um, and that's something that I can't stress enough. You need to be careful both with your positioning of the compass needle as well as the lifting of the compass needle. It's worth noting that nothing really changes in the way we, we do this exercise. We're still filling our ruling pen. We'll still clean off the, uh, the attachment um, every time we prepare to, to actually make a mark. You know, it, it's just about care and precision. And, you know, some of that precision will come with practice. So, you know, don't be disheartened if you're trying this and you're not um, entirely satisfied the first time with the lines that you're making. Um, it does take a little bit of practice. And, you know, as you, I, I guess, increase in um, competence, you can try different media. What I really like about working with these fine tech colors is that, you know, A, they come in a huge range of color, so um, you can really make it work, but you get a really nice finish. And, you know, if you're not quite up to working with genuine shell gold um, or equivalent, then, you know, I think it's a really good option if you like metallic paint. What you can see me doing now <clears throat> is I am going to ink in the actual lines of the pattern using a standard reading pen. It's really important to note that you know, when we're at this stage, you do have to stop between really every time you draw a, a set of lines and allow your paint to dry. The good news is gouache dries relatively quickly. Um, and I've, you, you really won't have to wait more than a minute or two um, for that paint to dry. But, you know, this comes back to really knowing your environment, um, knowing a, the, the, the media that you're working with so that you don't, you know, accidentally touch the paint or smudge it before it genuinely has dried. So uh, again, that will come, I think, with a little bit of practice and a little bit of experience, um, but please do bear that in mind. What you can also see, or you may have noticed, is I, wherever possible, will work in 
um, one direction. So, you know, in this particular pattern, you can see that we have pairs of parallel lines. So I will always start with the line at the top of the page and I will pull my ruler down so I know I'm not going anywhere near the wet line um, and work down the page. What you probably can't see from um, uh, this particular video is also that I always work on a small angle or a slight angle. Um, very easy to achieve. I simply have my drawing board and put a heavy book underneath it and it gives me a very nice gentle slope. Um, and that also helps um, when you're working in that one direction, both with the paint. Um, um, but just bear in mind that, you know, putting brushes or pencils and things like that on your drawing board, you don't want anything to fall downwards on you whilst you're working. So just be very careful again of your environment as you work. I think the only other thing to say is really, you know, you really do need to be patient here. As you can see, I've left this in real time so that you can see how long it takes for the paint to dry. And it really wasn't very long at all. This was filmed in one clip. Um, but, you know, it's quite warm. Uh, it's what July in London at the moment whilst I'm filming this. And so, you know, the air is very warm. It really takes, you know, maybe half a minute or if that for the lines to dry. Um, and, you know, with very little effort, I think you end up with a really, really attractive design um, inked in this beautiful metallic watercolour. Um, and, yeah, I'm really happy with it. OK, so now um, I've sped up the, the final few seconds because um, it's really quite repetitive, but I'm really just inking in the final couple of lines here. Um, once that's done, obviously give your ruling pen a quick rinse, um, careful with the points as I mentioned earlier. Um, and now you can see that the gold has dried, the paint has dried, and you get a really lovely, you know, super sharp, super precise um, line drawing using, you know, whatever ink or paint or medium um, th that you'd like. Um, so it's a really nice finish. So there you have it, folks. That really is the end of the tutorial. Um, just, I guess, a few words to finish on. Uh, it does take practice, so, you know, don't get frustrated, but please do give it a go. Um, look after your pens and you know they will last for a very long time so please keep them clean try and avoid dropping them or banging and scraping them because the the fine points are really um the thing that provide you with that beautiful crisp finish um as i mentioned i have got an accompanying accompanying blog post that goes with this video um, so do go and read that because I have a lot of other links to other really helpful resources on how to care for your ruling pens, how to maintain them, how to sharpen them, um, where to get them and so on. And um, so all of that information is available in my blog post. You won't find it linked in the YouTube um, uh, description because there's just too much information. Um, but I will provide a link back to my blog post for that. Um, so really just remains for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you found the um, video helpful and I really hope you can use it in your own practice. Thanks again. Bye bye.